Now we're going to talk about permissioning concepts. Liferead DXP has a robust security model that allows for the configuration of fine-grained access control. Liferead DXP's access control system lets you define who can use an application and who is allowed to add and edit a model resource. That access control within Liferead DXP is based on four key concepts, resources, actions, permissions, and roles. Firstly, resources are a generic representation of any application or entity used as an action target. Uh, there are two types of resources. Those are portlet resources and model resources. Some examples of resources include an instance of a blog's portlet, something like a wiki page, a document, or even a site. Portlet resources represent portlet applications. And they are identified by the portlet ID defined either in portlet.xml or the portlet component property javex.portlet.name. By convention, a component's fully qualified class name with the dots replaced by underscores is used as the ID, as seen in the code snippet taken from LifeRay's blogs portlet in the next slide. And we can see that right here. In general, to avoid misspellings, it's a good practice to have your portlet ID defined as a constant within a dedicated keys class, such as blogs portlet keys.java that you can see at the bottom of the screen. Notice the portlet ID, com underscore liferay underscore blogs underscore web underscore portlet underscore blogs portlet is written in its proper syntax. Much like portlet resources, model resources represent model entities like web content and documents. They're usually referenced by an entity's fully qualified class name, such as for web content, com.liferay.journal.model.journal article, or with a blogs entry, com.liferay.blogs.model.blogs entry. Actions are an operation that can be performed by a Liferay DXP user. Some examples for applications include adding to page, configuration, and some examples for model entities include adding an entry or updating. There are two types of action types. Top level actions, which are model actions for non-existing resources. For example, adding entry for the model name com.liferay.blogs and resource actions, which are actions for existing resources. For example, deleting for the model name, com.liferay.blogs.model.blogs entry. By convention, the top level actions are referenced by the package name of the respective service, for example, com.liferay.blogs, and the resource actions by the fully qualified name of the targeted model entity, for example, rcom.liferay.blogs.model.blogs entry. Permissions are an action that can be performed on a resource. Now, in order to be a permission, it does need to be a combination of a resource and an action. For example, the ability to update a blog entry would be a combination of the resource com.liferay.blogs.model.blogs entry and the action update. The scope of a permission defines how broadly the permission applies to resources in the platform. There are four options for scope. The first, company, grants a user permissions for every resource of the type within the portal instance. Two, group, gives user permissions for every resource within a specified group, such as an organization. A group template is similar to a group, except that it does not automatically apply to a specific group. A user must be a member of a group, and they must have been given the role within that group before they are granted its permissions. And finally, the individual level, which as you might be able to tell, uh, applies to individual users. Roles 
are a collection of permissions that can be assigned to users, sites, organizations, and user groups. Now, roles always have a scope assigned to them. The global scope means that that role can act throughout the platform. A good example of that would be your platform administrator role, which is automatically assigned to the first user you create. Uh, a role can be within the scope of a site or organization. Something like that might be a site administrator or a site content creator, where they have permissions to act accordingly within the context of a site or within a site or organization. So it may be that they are restricted to only certain resources within a site. Now here you can see an overview of the permissioning process. You can see on the far left, we have our user who might belong to a user group, several sites, or an organization. A role would then be assigned to that user, which gives them permission to act upon resources, which represent applications, model entities, or perhaps some custom entities. And remember that our actions and resources are defined within our default.xml. We also have the ability to manage permissions on an individual resource level. You can see here that we have a nice grid where we can uh, assign individual permissions accordingly. The typical steps to implement permissioning uh, begin with defining the file, declaring the resources and permissions, which would be portlet.properties. We declare resources and their permissions in default.xml. We manage those permission resources, usually through service layer CRUD methods. We create the permission registration and checking classes. We implement permission checking in the remote service class. And finally, implement permission checking on all the other layers as necessary. There are two database tables storing the permissions information, resource action and resource permission. Currently, we have the resource action table pictured for some blogs related permissions. And here we have the resource permission table showing those same permissions.